Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code HAMNATION when you check out. And by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. And by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In-stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash Ham Nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 168, live from the Twit Studio with Leo Laporte. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I get to turn on the big Collins 20V. Hello, everybody. This is K9EID, and I'm not in Missouri. I'm not in Illinois. I am in the Twit Studio in Petaluma, California, and we're here with a host of great people tonight. Leo's going to be with us in about ha halfway through the show, but I'm here with Gordo. Gordo, nice to see you here in this wonderful studio. Wow, what a studio, Bob, and we're delighted to be here ham nation live and direct from twit we love it well we we get to see all these people that we work with on the other side of the screen live and we're so happy to be here of course we're here for pacificon which is down the road a piece uh, this weekend you're going to hear a lot more about pacificon i think you're going to be there doing some things right oh you bet uh, saturday you and i are doing the breakfast kickoff and we've got a lot of blazing pickles yeah. and uh, uh, CW ASCII keyers and mm -hmm. digital. Uh, then we go right into the Ham Instructor Academy, right. where we'll be training many of these instructors to go bigger and better with more demos. That'll be a fun one. And then we follow up with you. Right. We're going to do some science about audio and that kind of stuff. So we'll we'll hear more about that after a little bit. But we're uh, we're really excited to be here tonight. Uh, over to our right in the other studio, another set is George and Randy and Mike. Hi guys, how you doing? Hi Bob. I I got up at 2:30 this morning flying to Petaluma and boy my arms tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all got up real early and thank goodness we made it through Chicago. Randy, uh, how did you get in? You make it okay? Oh yeah, no problem. It's only about a two and a half hour drive from uh, from Grass Valley down here, so it was an easy afternoon. Yeah, and then we got Mike. Uh, Mike could practically walk here. Mike, how long did it take you? To, a little longer, but not. I, I, I could practically walk here, but however, I did get up also at 2.30 in the morning, <laughs> not to drive here, but to watch the lunar eclipse. Okay. It took well. me about two hours, though, to get here, and uh, really enjoying it. Uh, honored to be a part of this show here tonight. Well, we're going to come back to you guys with some more stuff, but I, I, uh, let's uh, first of all let's do your normal thing. Let's talk about Hamfest and things that are happening first. All right. Well, happening right now is Georgia's ninth anniversary. Congratulations, Yay, George, George, of Amateur Logic. Woo. Wow. So we're celebrating that. Also celebrating this Saturday is Lagrange in Georgia's Ham Radio Ham Fest. And Bob, for the microwavers tonight, those of you on 432.100, it is our sprint contest tonight. October 11th, Saturday, Wheaton Community Radio Amateurs, they'll be taking folks through the technician class part two. Be sure and write for that graduation certificate when you all pass your test. And uh, the Dutch Fork Amateur Radio Club in Little Mountain, South Carolina, is having their ham fest. So it's going to be a busy weekend. Uh, especially with Pacificon right after what we're going to do here. Well, one of the things I wanted to do tonight, it, it, this came up really quick that all of us were going to be here. Valerie's going to be with us in a little bit. 
And uh, Amanda's going to be here, as well as Dale, and they've got some presentations for us, so we'll, we'll get to those guys. But I have a lot of people that email and call, and I talk on the air. They ask me, how did Ham Nation start? Well, it started not quite from this studio, but down the street a little bit on the same street, Keller Street, was the cottage, as uh, Leo and the, uh, uh, the crew called it. It was a little cottage. And Sarah and I came here to uh, just to meet Leo. We hadn't met him, but he had already been using our PR40. So we came here and spent a really nice uh, time with he and, and everyone at the uh, cottage. But while we were out to dinner a couple of nights and we did, a, if you've never seen Triangulation 8, you might want to go look at Triangulation 8. It was a great program that Leo and I did together. And during that time, his chat room came up and most of them were not their normal little handles. They were their ham radio calls. <laughs> and he says, uh, 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 said to me, Heil, did you set these guys up? And I said, no, this is um, pretty much your audience. I said, just remember, we were the original geeks. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very excited about having the opportunity to do that. He wanted us to do a show. I didn't get out of the parking lot until I called Joe Walsh. As you all know, Joe is a very good friend of, of Sarah and ours, and I called Joe because it was Joe that turned me on to Leo Laporte uh, when we were out here in California listening to him on a KFI. And so I, I, I called Joe, I said, hey, we want to do a show. And I didn't know, I figured it would go one or two shows, that was about it. Well, it went a little longer. But the second guy I called when I hung up with Joe was this guy, Gordon West, because Gordo is just a magnificent, uh, uh, he's just a great promoter of this hobby. And I thought, aha, and that's how we started. We had no idea that we'd be gone more than two shows. And uh, I think you're gonna hear something after a while when Mike gets on it, something about the 200th show coming up. Wow. So we're very, very excited and so thrilled to bring you ham radio and bring it to people that sometimes don't really know what we do and think it's very difficult and we don't we don't want to make it that way it is not difficult and especially with your teaching so that's how it all got started uh, a few weeks into that i got together with george who was just the best i i it was kind of funny if you go back and look at show two or three i me i'm trying to build a little code oscillator or something <laughs> And George will tell you later, he's going to explain this. You can't do this live. And I'm trying to watch the chat room, watch the uh, program uh, doc for all the times, and solder, and oh, it, it was awful. I came up with <laughs> smoke and solder. I thought that'd be a good title. And then I think George felt sorry for me, Gordon. <laughs> I really do. He'll, he'll probably say that. But I think probably he felt sorry for me. But how do you feel about how the show has went? And, uh, well, when Bob called me, I was jumping in the dune buggy with Suze, ready to head for the beach. He was so excited. And when he mentioned Leo Laporte, like many of you uh, out there in the uh, chat room and our viewers and listeners, we knew Leo, and I thought, wow, what an opportunity for ham radio. And the hams have positively responded to this show. So thank you, hams, for helping us make ham radio so much fun. One of the other things that have really, uh, uh, I guess, spurred from this are the club meetings that George and you and I do, not together, but uh, separately. We, we do club meetings via Skype. You know, clubs. Uh, they need programming today. You have to get some other interest, and you can get uh, you can get a lot of programming today free. Just put in a good old internet connection and Skype, and away you go. It really works well, and uh, I I love being able to share all of this excitement of amateur radio with all of your clubs. And if you haven't done that yet, send us an email, and we'll try to pick out a day and make it happen. Uh, we're, we're we're wide open to that because we, we want to bring the excitement and the knowledge. Uh, we were talking about it uh, coming up uh, in the car from the airport today. You realize how many things America, the world, would not have if it wasn't because of ham radio. 
You wouldn't have television. You wouldn't have VCRs. Yeah, well, oh, what did that do? It spurned into the CD. Because the engineers behind all of these great products were hams. And if you don't know that or realize it, you check it out. And most of the chief engineers of great radio TV stations and of these companies like Ampex and uh, all these great RCA, those guys were all hams amateur radio operators. They'd go home and go down in their basement at night and tinker and say, <laughs> wow, we need to put this on the market. Uh, wait a minute, that kind of sounds like me. Because <laughs> I do the same thing. I, I, I build something for myself and after I use it a while, I'm going, wow, this sounds pretty good. And it becomes a product. And so it's amateur radio that drives so much today, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. And one of the guys that really brings it to you is our good friend George. And George, congratulations on your ninth anniversary. I can't imagine how much time it takes you to put Amateur Logic. You and Tommy have done a magnificent job. And we're gonna roll over to the next set. He's got some guests and George is gonna tell you a little bit about how he got here and introduce Mike and Randy. Okay, well, thank you, Bob. Um, and thanks for uh, the congratulations on the ninth anniversary of Amateur Logic. That'll be next Wednesday. will be our official ninth year in production on that show. And that's kind of how I got in Ham Nation. You know, I started doing this back in uh, October of 2005 when there weren't really any video podcasts on the air. Uh, Twit, I think at that time, was doing mostly audio podcasts. And uh, this was after Tech TV was gone. But there were a few kids doing some videos on the Internet. And I got to watching some of them. And, and there were a few, uh, you know, uh, bigger names on there as well. But probably only a dozen or so shows, and I called up my friends Jimmy and Tommy, and I said, go watch some of these and see what you think. W would you like to do something like this? We're always tearing up something or building something. Somebody might like to see that, and uh, they said, yeah, let's do it. So that's how I got started in this, and I'm going to be talking about that at Pacificon Saturday uh, during a, a forum there. Uh, we've got Gordo starting out in the morning, I think Randy's doing another forum simultaneously in a different room, then Bob, and then I'll be on. But I had uh, seen the first episode of Ham Nation when that came out, and I wrote an email to Bob, and I said, Bob, I, I like the show. I like what you're doing there, and uh, keep on with it. And by the way, I do this other little show called Amateur Logic. And I didn't hear anything for about two weeks, and I had... I had talked to Bob on the air a couple of times before, but he really didn't know who I was. And I got an email in, two weeks later, and he said, uh, why don't you come join us and, and do this smoke and solder thing? Because he had seen some of our shows. And uh, that, that's kind of how I got into it. And, boy, it's been, a, it's been a lot of hours, a lot of hours between the two shows. And I'm fortunate that I have another guy here that's, helping out some with the smoke and solder. It's my friend over here for a number of years yes. now, Randy, K7AGE. Hi, George. Well, I'm just so happy to be here and be part of the Ham Nation crowd. It's really a lot of fun and really enjoy, you know, making some videos and helping you out. I know what it's like to put something together, and it's, uh, it's not a Saturday afternoon project. No. So, yeah, and I don't know how you have done it for all these years doing a show every week. I just blows my mind <laughs> it it takes a lot of time you know how much yeah because yeah. yeah the more we do this the more we get into the production values and all the shots and the editing and you always want to go back and just tweak it a little more and next thing you know it's like midnight and you've only made six edits and you know you just keep working at it and at some point you have to call it done and upload it so everybody can can take and watch it mm -hmm. yeah, that's so. that's it i mean there's going to be some imperfections in there and you know it's amateur it's amateur <laughs> Not professional, so. Right. Uh, but, but yeah, we appreciate you joining us. Thank and you. You've been at this uh, probably almost as long as I have. About how long now? I think I started about one year after you started doing the Amateur Logic. I um, had a camera and had a um, FireWire port, so I recorded a bunch of stuff around the ham shack. 
I was going to Beijing for a television broadcast convention. And one night when I couldn't sleep at three in the morning, I plugged the camera into the side of the laptop and it said, would you like to import the media? And I brought it in. I edited this little thing together and uploaded it from my hotel room in Beijing and go back the next day and there's like three, 400 views. And I go, wow, you know, there's really people out there looking for stuff. And, uh, and it's just gotten so much better and so much more detail. Uh, the videos that have really taken off is the how to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, my PSKs, um, you know, making antennas, the six meter dipole, the quarter wave, you know, things that we've been, you know, take for granted. We've been doing this for so long, but the new people really enjoy seeing, you know, actually putting stuff together, I get emails from people over at Radio Shack shopping for the parts, so it's really great to, you know, to be part of it all. Well, we really appreciate you coming in and joining us here. It's, it's been a, a big help for me personally, <laughs> I don't, if nobody else, because, boy, you know how tough it is to meet that production schedule. And now you actually have a schedule where before you could just kind of put them out as they were ready. But right. So yeah. now I have to start thinking out what I'm going to be doing. You know. I'm, not sure about next Wednesday yet. We haven't talked about what's no, happening we there because we're both gone. But I've ordered up a, a kit, and I've ordered up a whole bag of parts from something we saw a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to put that together, and uh, I think everybody will enjoy it. Yep. Sounds like a lot of fun. We'll have to flip a coin and decide who's going <laughs> next week because it's going to be you. tough. <laughs> well, we got one other guy sitting over here beside you here. This is Mike Ferreira. WT6H, Mike, tell us your connection with Ham Nation. <laughs> well, thanks, George. You know, uh, ever since the, the first uh, show of Ham Nation, I've uh, been calling on HF, calling CQ Ham Nation, and around the 13th show or so, uh, we started to get together in a formal net, after show net, and a great group of people. Uh, I have K5LN and me, were the first ones there calling CQ for Ham Nation. And uh, since then, over the last three years, it's evolved into <laughs> amount of people checking in after the show that is uh, just like over 100 check-ins or so. Here we had a few weeks ago. There's a lot of people wanting to check in uh, after the show on HF. And uh, we do a, a net every week after the show. We're on various bands and modes. <clears throat> I'm on 40 meters after the show. And um, basically what we've done now is we've dropped the list. We had a list that we called every week for people to check in. Something new now that we're doing, we've dropped that. Basically we have a theme that we're doing every week, uh, starting with the first week of the month. Uh, that's our special night there. Uh, we're looking for first time check-ins so that gives everybody that hasn't had a chance to check in and wants to check in that maybe has been shy mike shy there uh, gives them a chance to say hello on 40 meters so that'll be the first week of every month the second week uh well not this week but the, typically the second week of every month we're going to try to get the most check-ins we can so we're going to go at a fast format and try to, to break our record uh last time we did this last month we got 126 check-ins so wow that's <laughs> like uh, you know rock on boy. yeah yeah <laughs> and i know we, we've got more people than that out there uh, the nets have become super popular right. and uh so we try to get make the most of it with the two hours that we have after the show mm. another thing that I've, i'm holding here i don't know if you guys remember this this was from last year when we celebrated our 100th episode we had special event stations. Uh, there were four of us. And, uh, hey, tonight's episode 168. We're coming up on show 200. And there will be a show number 200 coming up here next year. I'm not exactly sure of the date. I believe it's going to be either May or uh, June of next year. That's date and time. And we're going to be doing another special, uh, special event. There will at least be four of us with special call signs. And uh, so... So look for that, uh, more information on that uh, soon. Uh, Mike, you have some other people that help you. On, and we're talking about the 40-meter net here is I, the one yes. that you do. Uh, well, we also have a net on uh, 20 meters, and we have one on Echo Link and on D-Star. And we'll be telling you where you can find all of those at the end of the show tonight. But you have some people that help you there on the 20-meter net, and you got them scattered around the country, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, so that's what makes 40 meters work. You know, typically 40 meters isn't a long band. 
Uh, we've got net control stations located on the East Coast in, in Danbury, Connecticut. We have K1 LTJ, and that's Al. And I know, Al, you're, you're watching out there. Al will be yeah. on after the show yeah. here tonight. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Dale, K0HYD, our video guy. And he's from uh, the central part of the country helping us out with check-ins. And uh, what a great find there with Dale now doing the videos. And, of course, yours truly here from the West Coast. Um, I will be on tonight. I'm going to have my remote rig set up here and uh, probably be doing some operating on 40 meters there af after the show. Look in the chat room, and we'll post that on there for right. you. So, right. uh, and hello also to, to uh, Steve and Bill there on 20 meters, uh, W7UDI. Uh, thanks, Steve, for, for all your help there on 20 meters. And I'm not quite sure who's on D-Star there, but uh, we will be, uh, Randy has- uh, Yeah, I had it running earlier. Yeah. We've got yeah. D-Star yeah. here in the studio, hoping to get uh, W6TWT to key the mic here tonight. Yeah, I think we've got Dave that runs the D-Star net. Okay. And I think we've got Dave that runs the Echo Link net too. Two different Daves there. Well, there you go. So a lot of ways yeah. that you can contact us here after the show. Yeah. Well, let's go back over to Bob and Gordo now and see what's next. We uh, can't forget Bill. K5LN. He was kind of one of the first. Mm -hmm. He was. That stepped into that and then it grew from there. And that's why this whole show is just grown from everybody that's put their heart and soul into it and uh, some has to check out for a while because they have a personal life <laughs> <laughs> so we appreciate that and uh, i uh, i appreciate my sarah giving me a few hours every wednesday night and it's do you with susie i'm sure you bet. but uh, it's been so much fun finding all these people and then oh i had a few months ago gordo and i was talking about we were talking about getting somebody that knew something about dx that's right Yep, and so, whoa, and I'm looking around the chat room, and here's somebody talking about Sable Island and all these things that I never heard of, because I'm not really heavy into DX. Yep, I build uh, most of their microphones and headsets, but I didn't know all about, and all of a sudden, I discovered Valerie, Valerie. and here she is. Hello, Valerie. Hello, everybody. It's re hey. really good to I have you with us. You know, when uh, Bob, I was always a fan of the show, and when Bob approached me back in April, um, I was really excited to do it because uh, I'm so obsessed with this hobby, especially with contesting and DXing. So <laughs> to be able to just talk about it is just a thrill of a lifetime, and I'm really glad to be on board here. I also wanted to say happy anniversary to you, George. That's, a, that's pretty darn amazing. And speaking of great inventions by ham radio operators, how about this one right here? <laughs> thank uh, you. you you know if it wasn't for ham radio we wouldn't have the uh Heil microphones i think that had a lot to do with that right well it uh, had a whole lot to do with it let me tell you and, and it really came the idea came from joe walsh uh, i'm oh, building that's... well i'm building ham radio microphones uh for many many uh, years and joe thought i needed to build him a microphone i said what do you mean just for your stage no man for my stage so as i always say gordo it's kind of neat to have the eagles as your beta tester and that's basically what it turned out to be but we're so happy to have you valerie and we look forward to all of your participations as we go through each show and uh, we're i think you got something coming up what tower safety is that the next one Yes, I'm working on that right now uh, to get that in the can for next Wednesday. And then the following one will be uh, LOTW Part 2. Oh. So, yeah, I'm keeping busy uh, getting those videos going. But uh, it's, a it's a labor of love. Oh. And, you know, I also wanted to say, you know, Gordo, you know, I originally met Gordo back when I was a two-meter girl. And I was the activities manager. And I was his chauffeur for the night so he could come and talk <laughs> to our club. <laughs> and... Uh, if it wasn't for those extra DV or CD CDs, I never would have gotten my extra class license on the first try. And little did I know I'd be working with you today. And I also want to give kudos to Randy. You don't even know this, but you were my Riddy Elmer. And I'm sure you were a lot of other people's Riddy Elmer because I had no clue how to do Riddy. And I found your video and that taught me Riddy. So uh, thanks to that. And then Mike too, and all you guys at Net Control, you guys are our PR and our advertisers, so I just, I, I get amazed. I just sit there and listen, sandbag and listen to you guys all the time, and I just, uh, 
love what you guys do for to promote yeah. the show. So that's all I wanted to say. So I'll uh, send it back over to you. Thank you. And it's Thanks, dittos Joe. because Gordon and I learn a lot about DXing that we, we do. didn't know either from you. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we are very blessed uh, to have sponsors that keep this thing on the air when you if you could be here looking what we're looking at all of the people that it takes all of the lights the electricity this the the building the facility here is amazing and uh, every time i come here it grows and grows and more and more people so we have to keep that going so we're going to uh, take a little uh, break here and going to listen to a, a word from harry's Hey, let's welcome a brand new sponsor to Ham Nation. Uh, and it's a nice sponsor, too. It's, it's Harry's. Harry's fixes a problem that most of us have, and that is getting a nice, clean, close shave and not having to pay too much for overpriced razors. Yeah, let's face it, guys. Shaving isn't fun. Sometimes you'll cut or scrape yourself with dull blades. It can be expensive, too. Those blades can run about 4 bucks a pop. And if you shave every day, you can spend hundreds of dollars a year just on razors. The Gillette Fusion, for example. Sometimes when you go buy them from the store, you got to, you know, have somebody unlock them like they're bullets or something. No. Yeah, who, who wants to deal with that? There's a company that fixes all that. It's Harry's. High-quality razors at about half the price of the big brand blades. And Harry's makes their own razors in their own factory in Germany. They're engineered for sharpness and high performance, and they are shipped for free right to your door. And because they make and ship their own blades, Harry's is a more efficient company, which means they can give you factory direct pricing. And Harry's guarantees your satisfaction. Check out the kit. In each kit, you get a razor with a handle. Looks and feels great. Three razor blades and a foaming shave gel. The starter Truman set is an amazing deal. And it, it's very nice. Uh, nice plastic handle. You get all this for just 15 bucks. And if you want to step up to the Winston set, you get all this plus the metal handle for just a little bit more. It's an amazing deal, and you're going to love Harry's. You're going to love the Truman, but if you want to step up to the Winston, this is the one you get. Look at that nice polished metal. Oh, it's it feels so good. It gives me a nice, clean, close, and comfortable shave. I love the look and feel of the set. It's just it's so nice and luxurious, and the price, you can't beat it. Harry's cost half as much as razors that you'll buy at the store, like your Gillette Fusion and stuff. They also have this great aftershave lotion. This stuff, it feels great. It uh, it smells good, too. It, it, and it's got a nice, neutral, clean, manly smell. And it's not going to clash with any cologne that you have. Plus, it protects and hydrates your skin. Go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase with code HAMNATION. That's harrys.com. Enter code HAMNATION at checkout. Harry's, thank you for the great product, and we thank you for your support of Ham Nation. You're going to love my new friend, Harry. Don Wilbanks, you are the best. Thank you so much. We wish you could be here with us, too. Gordo, you know, that was another situation where I've known Bill Pasternak since oh the late gosh. 50s. He used to work on six meters, right? You bet. And and I, I admired his work. I knew him when he worked at Channel 11, as you did. And then he started this thing called Newsline. Well, first it was Westlink. Westlink. Yes. And when, when we started Ham Nation, I thought, you know, that would be a really good thing. And we had a few shows with it, but... It was um, it was okay, but it was somebody reading dry script, right? Bingo! Here <laughs> comes Don Wilbanks, who does uh, a lot of things with him weekly, and Don has become a terrific addition to Ham Nation. He this is what he does every day is read scripts. So uh, we're so pleased to have him with us, and we appreciate that very very much. And another guy that we found. Uh, I started this thing of show me your shack. And there again, you can't do it by yourself. It, you, you got all this stuff going on and you're keeping the show going and uh, talking back and forth uh, behind the scenes. And that was to carry on this tradition of having videos. And boy, do we get another one here. Wow. And that's Dale. Dale, how are you doing tonight? Hey, pretty good, uh, Bob. Good evening to you. Good to be here. This is a fantastic show tonight. We're... Uh, we're really loving it, and we've got a special treat for you, too. Well, I know that you have put your heart and soul into this particular segment of the show. I know it takes a lot of work. You and I, we, we try to do this, and it, it gets all messed up. <laughs> it does. Dale's <laughs> got it. He's got it. Okay, well, Dale, uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on out there in that uh, state of Kansas. Oh, we've got everything tuned up, ready to go for the post-show net here. Help Mike out a little bit. And uh, 
We were up uh, very late last night with the full moon and then up early again in the morning. So after the video, we've got a treat for Mike there, I believe. So we'll uh, we'll spring that on him and see what he says. But uh, right now, uh, we've got something that started when we got it, a short email from Dennis Casey. His call is KC1BHS. And he sent us a note and I'm going to read it here because it is short. I would thoroughly enjoy viewing pictures of the Ham Nation staff QTH antennas. Love the show. Thank you. So, Dennis, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> we received more than 20 shots from Gordo and Bob and Val and, and everybody. So right now, we're going to take a look. Welcome to the antennas of Ham Nation. Let's start in Southern California with a look at a few of the beams at WB6NOA. Here's the feed point for Gordo's dipole and his VHF and UHF arrays. When Gordo's on the go, he often uses this beam on a portable mast. And he makes a lot of microwave contacts also. From Southern California, let's move to Danbury, Connecticut. Pick up a drone's eye view of the Step IR DB18E at K1LTJ. Here's what Al sees from the ground as he looks up, and a view of the trombones at 66 feet, just above the Connecticut treetops. Skipping back to the West Coast and the Gilroy, California QTH of Mike WT6H, here's his hex beam with his 40 meter rotatable dipole. And a closer view that also shows his active pixel loop antenna mounted on a rotor. This antenna often reduces the high noise level by several S units. Moving now to South Central Kansas and a quick look at the Step IR DB18 at K0HYD. Here's a closer view and a view of the high power ballon on a 160 meter off center fed dipole. I also use a 43 foot vertical, presently also have another work in progress, the installation of two active antennas in the swamp 650 feet away from the high tension power lines along the yellow brick road. The phase is controlled from the shack to tune out the high noise level. Steve, W7UDI, our 20 meter net control operator, reports his antennas are literally a work in progress. Here's a shot of the first 20 feet of his new tower. In a week or so, Steve will bring in a 105 foot bucket truck and top off the tower. Back in Southwest Missouri, Bob Heil, K9EID, designed a 75 meter phased array for his new home, and then he built it. At the top of these poles, exactly 66 feet, the two dipoles are spaced 66 feet apart. And the phase is switched from the shack to give Bob an amazing 20 plus dB front to back ratio. Bob also has a tribander as well as beams for both VHF and UHF. A bit further south in central Mississippi, George uses two collinear antennas for VHF and UHF. He also has a 40 meter off center fed dipole hidden in a grove of pecan trees and an 80 meter loop outlining the perimeter of his property. And George uses a small mobile antenna on the top of his garage to reach the local D-Star repeater. Check out all the antennas at the K1DDN and K0JSC QTH in Canyon City, Colorado, all the way from a dish at 5.7 gigahertz down to the high frequency bands with a G5RV. They're all mounted on a 50-foot RON 25 tower. And this is the spoiler, only one shot from a video describing the amazing antenna farm at Val in V9L's home in Indiana. On the next video segment, Val will take us on a video tour with a complete description of all of her many antennas and towers. And that's it, the antennas of Ham Nation. If you have ideas for similar photo stories, send them to hamnationvideos at twit.tv and we'll see what we can put together.
Okay, very well. Well, we really thank Dennis for giving us that idea, KC1BHS. And uh, it's uh, time to challenge you. If you've got uh, something you'd like to know about the Ham Nation hosts or uh, post-show net uh, controllers or anything, or any subjects you'd like covered in some kind of a story like that, let us know. And we'll see what we can turn up. Now, speaking of uh, seeing something absolutely amazing, if Brian oh, will call oh. the shot up, uh, oh. this was the uh, oh, uh, scene here uh, in uh, South Central Kansas about 6.06 this morning. Wow. That's a couple of shots. It's actually the same shot. One was uh, cropped just a little bit looser. But uh, that was the bloody moon, and that's what Mike got up to uh, to see this morning. So uh, Brian saw that. We thought we'd well, like to see it, so we, uh, we threw that in here too. So uh, on the next video segment, uh, we've got that great video from NV9L. You won't believe the antennas that Val uses. And uh, <laughs> we'll present another episode of Show Me Your Shack, too. We've got quite a few in. But send your shack photos uh, and your links to any videos you might have to uh, Ham Nation videos at TWIT.TV. Until then, 7-3 from the Yellow Brick Road. Bob, Gordo, back to you. That was really, really wow. good. That was great. And I bet you you didn't use some little brownie or Polaroid to do that shot at the end. That was great. Well, uh, I, I noticed in the back we, we got to mention Jim's engraving. You know, Jim does these great signs for each of us and you had yours on and we appreciate that Jim's a good friend of ours from uh, back in Illinois and he's he does all these many things for uh, each of us and for many of you Jim's engraving go check that out and you'll see what we're talking about he's a, a wonderful guy and we appreciate all that he does for all the hosts here on the show well we're going to take another break and listen to a word about ICOM 2014 marks the 50th anniversary of ICOM Incorporated. To celebrate this milestone year, ICOM is releasing two limited edition radios, the IC7850 HF 50 MHz transceiver and a special ID51A VHF UHF dual band handheld. These models are limited in quality and include innovative features that you can only expect from ICOM. The IC7850 is the pinnacle of HF perfection. There will only be 150 units available worldwide. This limited edition radio has vibrant gold accents and each unit will have a 50th anniversary limited edition plate. Features include a 1.2 kilohertz optimized roofing filter for improved in-band adjacent signal performance and excellent dynamic range. A new local oscillator design with a CN ratio that excels beyond the competitors and creates a new benchmark for phase noise with an amazing minus 150 dBc slash hertz at 10 kilohertz offset and 140 dBc slash hertz even at 1 kilohertz offsets. There are also several new scope enhancements such as an improved spectrum scope for faster sweep speed and better accuracy, a dual scope function to simultaneously see activities in both receivers, a high resolution spectrum scope screen, and enhanced mouse operation for the spectrum scope. The ID51A unlocks the power of D-Star from the palm of your hand. Only 5,000 units are available worldwide. This radio will feature the words 50th anniversary on the front interface. It comes in blue, green, red, white, and black limited edition colors. The special edition features include faster data transfer in DV mode, RSMS1A Android app compatibility, additional d reflector link commands, other enhanced digital features include DV and FM repeater search, and DPR functions and a long antenna supplied for optimal receive performance. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM's 50th anniversary limited edition IC7850 and ID51A. And to go along to the icomamerica.com ham nation to enter this week's drawing and to see previous winners. <laughs> what do you think? Pretty cool, huh, Bob? Uh, this is pretty cool. Wow. Yes. Uh, neat stuff, and uh, it's their 50th anniversary. Happy 5-0, Ray. Everybody's having an anniversary, so uh, we're really happy that that they're with us all these uh, all these years they've been here, and it has been years. We appreciate it because it does keep us going. 
Gordon. Yeah. Okay. It, you got, it's sticking out there. You want to make sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to take it home, I guess. Yeah, I guess you'll have to take it home. Oh, golly. Well, we really appreciate uh, all of the sponsors, and um, uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. And I appreciate that very much, and especially ICOM. They've been very supportive of not just uh, what they do for the advertising, but they support all of amateur radio, and that's that's the main thing. Well, we're very uh, happy that Ray is here, and Ray has some friends to talk about Pacificon and what's going to happen in a couple of days. Ray, take it away. Well, thank you very much, Bob and Gordo, and uh, not to play on a phrase older than I am, Gordon, are you happy to see me, or is that a radio in your pocket? <laughs> Anyway, tonight I'm here with David, Tracy, and Marilyn, and we're here for one main reason, and that is for the Pacificon Ham Fest this weekend. David, your role at Pacificon this year? I am forums chair this year. Oh, yeah. And so you're responsible, really, for getting us all here because I think pretty much most of the guys that we had on here earlier our presenters in your forums, right? Yep. Well, I'm, you're responsible for getting yourself here, but I give you a reason to come. So. Uh, it's good to be a part of it. What else do you have going on other than the cast here speaking? Well, we have a lot of stuff going on this year. Uh, we have an SDR track, software-defined radio track. Uh, very popular last year. It was our first year doing it. We have a D-Star forum, specifically for D-Star. I know that make you happy. And then the DMR forum as well. So uh, the digital uh, folks will be there in full force. We have our VIP track. Obviously, we've talked about uh, Gordo and Bob and such being in that. Uh, there, Carol Perry from the Radio Club of America will be there doing an all-day youth forum. And Carol is from uh, back in New York. She's flying out for this. And she does a fantastic job with the younger folks. And she, I've seen her work with them, and she really, really is yeah, we, we sponsor her for and, her Dayton Hamvention yeah, Forum, and exactly. it's incredible. I know yeah. Gordo's worked with her real close and has done an incredible job promoting amateur radio to the youth. And, and she has done a really great job, and, and she's a friend, and I, I count myself lucky. Um, Baynet, the uh, WW6BAY, which is the amateur radio group that I'm involved with, is doing on Sunday morning what we're calling Ham Radio 101. And this is for newly licensed hams who uh, maybe just got their ticket recently or have recently upgraded. So the folks from Baynet will be there to talk about how do you get on the air, uh, how do you set up your first station, uh, what antennas should you be looking for. So you guys are doing more to than just getting new licensees. You're getting new licensees active. Right, exactly. Of course, you know, lots of people get their license. The question is, do they actually pick up the microphone and talk? We're looking to get as many people on the air as possible. So if you're coming to Pacificon, if you've recently got your license, if you got licensed at Pacificon, please join us on Sunday morning where we're going to have an opportunity for you to learn a lot, ask a lot of questions, and there will be a room full of Elmers who will be there to help you get on the air. Very cool. And it also brings in Marilyn and Tracy because I think they're assisting with that. Oh, that's that's correct. Uh, we're going to be helping a little bit there on uh, Sunday with uh, some of the things Gordon's doing and the plans that, that David has there. So we're looking forward to that, and of course, uh, all of Pacific Con, of of course. So uh, we're really really glad that and pleased that we could be here. My second year, and I think Marilyn uh, third. third year. So, but you guys are more than just helping out. There's actually a segment of amateur radio that you guys focus on, isn't it? That's correct. And first of all, I really like to. Uh, Thank David again here for all the different uh, sessions that are going on. Uh, one of the things that, that we do here is uh, we're with uh, San Bernardino County Office of Emergency Services, and uh, we do emergency communications, uh, maybe a little bit differently than some other groups do it. But it, the forum here that we have uh, gives us an opportunity to look at the different technologies what different ham radio operators are doing and kind of see how we might be able to integrate that into doing communications uh, from an emergency level. So... In our particular county, um, you know, we don't have like an Aries or a Racies group necessarily, but we combine everything together. And we're under the San Bernardino County um, Fire Department. The Office is, of Emergency Services is under a fire department there. Is that because you guys just focus on fires only? Is that the only kind no, of emergency? No, no. Actually, actually, and I'm the mountain division chief, so up in the mountains we tend to have lots of different things. Uh, you, people are all aware of that. We have a lot of fires, the big fire in 03 and 07. Uh, we actually help out. 
we do the communications. We bring actually a very large unit uh, up, and uh, we operate all of that. So it kind of amazes people that it's actually amateur radio operators that are operating all the communications equipment for all the county emergency work there. So we have fires. We have floods. You know, we have earthquakes, of course, we prepare for uh, all the time. And uh, a couple of years ago, we had a it's kind of a strange event that we have snow all the time in the winter, but we had so much snow that it knocked out almost all the repeater systems up there. So much so that uh, they asked some of us in hams to go out in both the fire engines and in the snow cats to go to the tops of the hills to provide communications back down so that everybody could, uh, could communicate from the, uh, the served agencies. So the fire department, uh, EMT units and sheriff and all of that. But are these just for special occasions, or do you get hit with emergencies in normal life? Well, there, there's, there's two things here. Uh, yes, uh, we have in our group up here in the mountains now, we kind of have two major areas there. Uh, one's called Central Mountain, which is the Lake Arrowhead area in general, and the other is Big Bear. And we have 60 members in one and about 30 in the other. And because we're driving the mountain roads all the time, we run into all kinds of different things. Uh, last week, uh, I was a third car in line for an overturned truck with a roof crushed in, you know, and people out there immediately get on the radio. Um, we, we practice, and I'll tell you maybe about that a little bit later, how we practice. We do the communications, and uh, we check in, and somebody else helps with the calls. The calls go down to a dispatch center, either to fire, or does a dispatch, or to the sheriff. And uh, I was the first one on the scene, so I ended up doing uh, traffic control for about an hour and a half. Uh, EMT units came about 15 minutes later, and the CHP came about a half an hour later, and they let us, because we are so well-trained, let us continue to do the communications and to do traffic control. So those are some of the things that, you know, that we do. I well, think one of well, the main keys is training. You know, you have your license, you have your radio, yeah. but now you need to do training in the trenches and be active on your radio. Well, I just received notice here that we might have an an a emergency here at Twit Studios. <laughs> Gordo, can you fill us in on what's happening? <laughs> Look who I found walking around in the back. I need training. <laughs> <laughs> he needs no training. Who wants to be my Elmer? You had great training. I had great training. From I only your... did the technician, but I did the general. And I remember Gordo. from your hot tub. That w Remember that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well. Never kids take a radio in your hot tub. <laughs> yeah, but you had a Gordon. Uncle Leo. You had a Gordon West book in your hot tub. I remember <laughs> that on the yeah, show. Yeah, the book's great in the That's hot right. tub. That's right. You've uh, designed these to be electrically safe. Yeah, slick for, pages. For right? hot tub yeah, use. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, these are great. Leave. You update these every year, though, or every test. Yeah, every uh, four years. Every they four get years because they test, they change the test. Leo so Laporte. All of Amateur Radio, thank you for all you've done we to do. keep this going. And I'm happy that you are here to everybody could say hello. And uh, uh, we're just having a big time tonight, kind of reminiscing how it all started. But it all started with... How long has it been? Four years? Oh, coming up, I think, yeah. I was trying to think. I met you, I think, in 2000. Six. Yeah, something the like that. Podcast Expo because yeah, you yeah. had donated right. a high you, LPR forty. And guess who? Guess who won the best <laughs> podcaster <laughs> of the year? I, <laughs> and and I, you know what? That changed my life because we use PR forties. Well, as yeah. you can see, uh, uh, Heil Sound is like our audio. That's so how we so. met. I. That's not, when, for, not this though. I apologize. I don't know uh, what this is. Uh, Sarah and I, uh, we were <laughs> we were living in California at the time, and one day I turned on KFI and I hear this this lady said, "Oh, I love what you do, Leo. You sound so good." And you went into a two-minute commercial for 160 <laughs> radio stations about the Heil PR40, how good it was. <laughs> I, we we sold had never a met. Couple. So I called you and. Here we are. And, and you brought my gold back, gold mic I back. Did. Thank you're, you. You're, you're All working. fixed. That's right. And now two spit guards. There you go. Are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> no, no. I, I Is think, that what was wrong with it? I, I think maybe Alex or John, uh, I think they, they might have something to do That's a double pop card. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Well, Leo, again, we thank you so much for this time. And I was telling him a while ago, all of the facilities here, we really appreciate yeah. it. Well, thank you. And, and uh, thanks to Ray Novak for all this great ICOM gear. Yeah. It's, One of these days. Well, Ray, if you want it back, it's hardly used. <laughs> One of these days, though, I plan to, you know, I, now I'm, we li I live out in the country. I have a little more acreage. There you go. We're going to talk about I have, that. You know, I was just looking yeah. for my, uh, mm -hmm. my ICOM handy talkie. I don't know where that's gone. Maybe I took it mm -hmm. home. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, one of the things we'll do here, if we're going to take out a minute, then you and I are going to have a little bit of fun. We need to talk uh -oh. about DX Engineering, another one of the great sponsors from a great company. So let's hear about DX Engineering. Hey, let's talk about DX Engineering. You know, you got a great amateur radio station. How do you know you have a great amateur radio station? Because you're making contacts all over the world. But do you know if it's operating at maximum efficiency? How can you tell? Well, you need diagnostic and measuring equipment. And you need the best. And that is where DX Engineering comes in. No matter what you need, DX Engineering carries a wide assortment of system monitors, watt meters, RF meters, and antenna analyzers, including... MFJ, Coaxial Dynamics, and LDG. Let's start with the 259C from MFJ. Four basic circuits, the 530 kilohertz to 230 megahertz variable frequency oscillator, frequency counter, 50-ohm RF bridge, and an 8-bit microcontroller uh, will help you measure a wide range of antenna and impedance measurements. You can even use it to measure coaxial cable loss and distance to an open or short. Every ham needs this in their shack. And the two frequency range knobs allow for amazing control and expanded range also means it covers medium wave am broadcast bands now also you got to go check out coaxial dynamics these are amazing watt meters same gear used by pro wireless and broadcast engineers they allow you to measure both forward and reflected power and each meter uses the coaxial dynamics plug-in elements specify your desired frequency and power range and they fit the bird line sections good stuff here and uh, coaxial dynamic swap meters are housed in an almost bulletproof chassis. They are ideal for remote and field testing. And then there's LDG. you got to be able to read your meters. You know about their tuners, just great tuners. But check out these meters. Just great big old, uh, great, great big, great big displays. Look, uh, just, oh, nice. I'm tired of looking at the little bitty meters on your radio. you got to check this out because uh, they're ad excellent additions to your shack. Great upgrades, like I said, to supplement your transceiver's built-in meters, especially if you got those little bitty radios and the little bitty meters. If you want to grab any of DX Engineering's uh, meters or test equipment or anything, you need to uh, get on the stick. Go to, uh, go to dxengineering.com slash ham nation you get your order in by 10 p.m eastern if it's in stock it'll be on a truck headed your way tonight proven products expert advice the fastest shipping in the industry dx engineering helping you shrink the globe dx engineering thank you so much for your support of ham nation that's right get your catalog shop online 24 7 dxengineering.com slash ham nation Hey, hey, we don't have to go worry about you. You found it. I found everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Use it. I got it all. I'm ready. I think we should call somebody. Well, you let me. Somebody I can call. Well, let me show you what we're going to do. Look, I checked this out. Check there. Look at this. If we turn this knob yep. real slow, yep. who's going to come in? Wait check a this out. Is that? Who is it's that? Amanda. Is that Amanda? Oh, oh wow, Amanda. How would you do that? Neil has dialed twit. you up. <laughs> I can't believe it. You guys are amazing out there. Ah. Hey, Leo, it's so nice to see you. And uh, there's so many people in the chat that are really excited that you're here tonight. Well, that's great. Yeah, I don't understand a word you're saying, anything <laughs> saying. But, oh, I have to talk into this? Yeah. Is that how that works? Into that end. We, okay. And it, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here, and hello to everybody in chat, too. By yeah. the way, I'm wearing this little goofy hat because it happens to be Mr. <laughs> Kyle's birthday this week. And I would sing, but I'm terrible, so I'm not going to do it. Um, hopefully, we can find a birthday song. But, hey, Leo, if you Thank have you. a minute or two, we have a lot of questions for you. Okay. It's, okay. Yeah, I didn't, they didn't tell me there would be a test. Yeah. Oh, yes, and uh, this is definitely pass or fail. So uh -oh. get it right. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. It's just so lovely to have you here. And by the way, I have to wear this jacket because you guys are so snazzy tonight. Okay, yeah, I think Leo. Good looking. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, I've got, I've, got, uh, I've got Gordo's book, so go ahead. Ask oh, any good, question you good. want. How does he fry the pickle? No, not, not the pickle. <laughs> not the pickle question. Um, okay, so a lot of people want to know, how did they finally convince you to get your license? I think it's Bob, because Bob just puts the pressure on. He really pressured me for a long time. He said, and get your license. Chat license. room. Chat room had a lot to a lot do with it. A lot of hams uh, in the chat room. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I I, mean, I knew I was going to use Gordo's materials. But having those, and I, and Gordo sent me not only the books, but he also sent me the CDs. Yeah. So I would listen to you in my car. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And then I would read the books when I got home. There you go. I was pretty well prepared. Yeah. I see you include a CD in the book now. In the book. That's right. nice. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, the That's... audio is really helpful because it gets in your brain that way. That's great. I'm yeah. glad I'm glad you took the initiative. Um, that's 
that's wonderful. Also, another question is, have you convinced others at the Twit Studios to get their ham license? Well, John C. Dvorak got his uh, technician license. Mm -hmm. We're working on him to get his uh, general. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, it's an interesting thing because uh, I'm on the a board at the, at the a local high school. They're kind of up on a mountain in a kind of remote area. They have an emergency plan. And I said, you know what you need on your emergency plan? One of you needs to be a technician. And I said, I will give you a handy talk. Yeah, I'll give you an, AM, wow. an FM radio if, if you get a ham up there. So we're, we're working with somebody to get uh, his technician's Very license good. because it, they're up on the mountain. If the That's phones great. go out, they've got a, you know 250 yeah. kids there. Wow. They need a way to, uh, and I said, talk, contact uh, your cert uh, in your area because they'll be able to help you. Uh, Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. Good. That's awesome. By the way, uh, I still have to give you a fail because I think the guys on Last Man Standing have a lot more licensed on their studio. <laughs> yeah, we don't, you know. <laughs> What is wrong with you people? <laughs> Get your license. The funny That's thing right. is we have Ryan? probably the best equipped ham shack uh, since uh, Bob Heil. But, uh, yeah, no, I, and I even told my staff, anybody wants to get a license, uh, they can show me how to use this yeah, stuff. Yeah, there you go. So. Okay. Oh, there you go. I have um, one more question, and I think you guys kind of answered this, but um, do you work the radio outside of Twit Studios? Do you do uh, this at home? I'm a very bad ham. I have all uh -oh. this great gear and knowledge, and I just, I get home and I just want to watch TV. <laughs> right. I'm so That's tired. Right. I, but I talk all day, right? And I don't know how Art Bell does it, because Art, you know, would do his yeah. radio show, and then right. he'd get on his, uh, in Pahrump, he'd get on his radio, and he'd talk all the night away. But I said, I told, I, told, uh, I told everybody, when I retire, mm -hmm. I've been doing shows on the 25-meter uh, band. Just look for me there. Yeah. yeah. Well, one thing that... <laughs> one thing that Perhaps a lot that are watching and fans of Ham Nation might not know how long have you been doing this? It goes back to 19, what, 80? Doing what? Your Wearing shows. Wearing funny hats? Your shows. Uh, yeah, no, I started doing... Uh, the Screensaver started in 98. 98, But wow. I started doing call-in uh, technology radio shows in the early 90s with John C. DeVore. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing it 20, 24, 25 years. Yeah. Not wow. as long as you. Well... You've been doing not, what you do for... A long time. Like a long time. Years yeah, or almost 48 years really? at Kyle Sound. Wow. I was 25 years at KMOX. Wow. Were you a chief? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Nope. 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 Just one of them lowly third ticket types? No, on air. High you tech. You were a disc jockey? I, high tech Kyle. Oh, wait a minute. I knew that. You, that, had, you did. Right. So you were my predecessor. Exactly. I remember CBS sent me to a, they'd send me to CES high and all this. Aisle. And they <laughs> They came up with this, I didn't do it, they did it, of course. And I remember this one show I did, you'll, you'll uh, probably uh, were right behind me on this. I said, look, they gave me this little disc, and he said, we're going to be able to throw our Norelco tape recorders away, <laughs> wow. and we can put music on this disc. Ooh. It was going to be a yeah. CD. So you so. did that for 25 mm -hmm. years? KMOX, yep, every Wednesday night. And that was a, that's a 50,000 watt powerhouse. Mm -hmm. That talked is one of the big clear... We had 44 states. Yeah. Jim White was the host at that night. He was a ham. And um, we had 33% of the market. Wow. I mean, it was a big deal wow. because that's when a lot of people listened. What years to, did you do that? 1977, I started. Oh, man. I was just, I was, that's when I graduated from college. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just had my my birthday, number 74, last Sunday. Wow. Congratulations. Happy yes. birthday. 74. And uh, I'm still you know what? cooking. He looks great. Doesn't he look great? He does. Yeah. He's well preserved. He's <laughs> because <laughs> my wonderful, sweet wife, Sarah, she takes care of me, cooks the right stuff, guides me in the right places. And runs she soaks the company. you in purple. Yeah, purple. <laughs> See, that's another <laughs> trivia question as to what, where did purple come from? I there is a reason, one. but very few, if any, know, I know the I real know. Does everything answer. to do with Joe Walsh? Mm, kind of, but not really, not he's, totally. He's kind of a colorful fellow. Yeah, I know that. He's colorful no matter what he wears. <laughs> he's just, he's the greatest. Talking about the greatest, it's Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. Um, Amanda, we uh, really appreciate you being here, uh, you and you. Jeff. And uh, we'll see you again down the road. And she also has one of those great signs from Jim's Engraving. You bet. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. see mine up there. Yeah, Look, I love isn't that those that great? Signs. Yeah, Jim's a great guy. Yeah. Well, thank you, Amanda. We appreciate you being with us tonight in this fun show. And uh, we don't know where it's going from here, but 
it will it will continue to grow. We, we've got to hit Mike's 200th show. He's already talking about show 200. <laughs> so what can I tell you? <laughs> you know, I mean, I got a question for you. What am I going to do with this when I pass? This is this is when this you is, what? Well, I'm just telling you, this is, is like no a bet. two ton AM <laughs> transmitter. You know how many people would love to have this? Oh, good. There's a market for these. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, good. Because you helped me with Mike oh. Durow. You got this for me. I mean, I bought it, but, right. it wasn't, but he gave me a deal, I think, because right. it was a good but price. But still, no, there's a lot of guys that... Uh, I'm a, I mean, he hasn't gone through the floor, frankly. Oh, I think you the, the, the uh, transformer floor. in that must weigh up a ton. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. Collins. That Collins, was probably on, it was probably on some AM radio station. It was. It, uh, it was in, uh, I want to say, Iowa City. Iowa? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, Mike DeRose, the best at restoring them, and uh, W6JW. Uh, did the console for He you? did it. That was uh, Jennings, right? Jen uh, mm -hmm. Dave, Dave Jennings. Jennings yep. Yeah. Yep. In so, fact, we sent this the original back because I said, well, you don't have a, happen to have a gate stereo statesman. Because in college radio, that's right. in about 1976, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's what I was using right there. Yes. He took that out of his own station and uh, <gasps> traded you for it. Oh, that was awfully nice uh, of him. He's a great wow. guy. He and his wife Thank are both you, Dave. engineers. And yeah. There you oh, go. And I love it. These guys do such good work. Yeah. They recondition this. This is looks more pristine than the one I was using <laughs> when it came out. I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. Well, I, we're getting down to that uh, bottom line, and uh, one of the things we have to do is go back to George because he's going to tell you about the D-Star, where people are, and what's going on uh, after net, uh, what's happening. George, you have some words about that? It's going to be on 7.268 or thereabouts. The 20-meter net is going to be on 14.268. Uh, I believe seven three seventy three fourteen dot three seventy three. Of course, I know where D Star is. It's always on reflector fourteen module C, and Echo Link is on Star Do Drop In Star Node Number three five five eight hundred. All right. Well, we are all keyed up to go to Pacificon. Thanks, Dave, for coming in and giving us all the great uh, words about Pacificon. And it's great to have everybody here, but it's very special to have you, Leo. Thanks. It's for special to have you guys Absolutely. here. I love it when you can be here in studio with us. It's really yes. nice. You didn't bring your... Uh, your uh, signal meter. Can we? Can you help me? We got. We got noise in our belfry. We got to figure. Have out. Noise. There's. <laughs> yes. I remember you and Gordo driving around Petaluma saying, "There's nowhere in town you it's, can do this." I don't know what <laughs> it is. Noise. Yes. Well, thanks everybody for being here. We'll look for you next week. And if you're up in the area, be sure and stop by the Twit Studio. And just like tonight, we have guests. Did you know that we have guests in our in our studio in six LPV KG6BKK. Stop by. They welcome everybody to come by it's and really nice, be yeah. in the audience. And of course, all of the other people. And the best in the world is that chat room. You guys and gals keep it going, and we appreciate you being there. So uh, take care. We'll see you on the air. Ooh, a little high, a little low, you know. But we will be there, and uh, we'll hopefully see you down the line at some of the ham fest. 7-3, everybody. 7-3.